friends. It's Lisa, Little Annie Z. I am here on my mom's and my floss tube channel, Little Annie Z and Mama Z. I hope everybody's doing well and you've been um, finding fun things to stitch um, and craft and uh, whatever it is that you do that's creative. Um, I'm going to save all of the special segments that I have on my um, floss tube channel for towards the end so that I can get right into the stitching part right now. Um, so I'm going to start with my FFOs. Um, I finished Honey Bakery by Stitching with the Housewives. I, it's actually called Honey Bee Boulevard 1. Um, I just love this. This was adorable. And because I love baking and we're beekeepers, I had to do this one. So I, I modified the pattern a little bit and I um, used a hexagon wood piece that I showed you in my uh, last floss tube. And um, it was really simple to make it into this um, shape. I actually laid the Ada stitched piece down and um, put the back of it on it and um, I think I just used a pencil and traced around to get my shape and then I sewed a piece of interfacing to the back of it and then I pressed each little um, segment here so you could tell like I only I only missed a little bit there at the bottom and then there was a row of bees at the top that I didn't do um, actually let me correct myself. Um, I did trace it like I told you and then I pressed it in and then I put the fusible um, interfacing on top and that's how it kind of sealed itself. I don't know if you could tell the right here is where the interfacing ends. And I spray painted this um, uh, like a mustard color and just popped it right in there and it sits on my shelf. So this was really a quick stitch. Um, I did change the colors um, because I didn't have all of the colors. Um, I think I just, um, I think I just substituted the pink. Um, and I don't remember what it was, but it's because I did it on the Ada and I didn't have Priscilla's Peppermint. So that's my first FFO. Let's see. My next FFO is kind of a re-FFO. <laughs> um, I put together these Lori Holt chicken salad um, applique pieces together last year. And... Um, let me show you a close-up. That is uh, Lori Holt's um, uh, The Chicken Footprint. Um, and this is um, just a, I think it's a Henry Glass 1930s fabric collection. And then I did a second one and I just made a pillow where the chickens are on both sides. So I thought I was going to make a table runner and um, so I've had these squares hanging around. I wanted to display them because they were so cute so I put them on um, my kitchen door um, curtain rod but um, I thought I really want to do something with them. So I decided um, that I was going to make a pillow. So there, the square is lined with the same fabric. Um, I made a cover button and sewed the top shut. So actually, 
the entire top portion is open. It's only closed by um, ribbon bows. And I stuffed it with um, folded up scrap batting to make it into a pillow. I didn't have a pillow form. This was kind of a um, quick and dirty finish, <laughs> re-FFO. So I think it's cute. Um, I display it here in my craft room on the futon that I have here. Okay, let's see. Um, oh, and the last FFO that I have is actually not an FFO yet. This is really a finish. Um, I did the Calico Garden um, applique piece for the B-Skep. And it's super cute. Um, I'm going to make pillows with these as well. So when I get to that FFO, I will show you. Um, I've chosen several blocks, and I'll get to, to show you that um, when I show you my whips. Um, but I used all of the Lori Holt fabrics. Um, this was super easy to use. Um, strips that I had saved, and I also used um, jelly roll, um, jelly roll, you know, strips, <laughs> um, and it's just some scraps um, that I had kept. So um, that's going to be a pillow. All right, so um, now let me share with you my whips. Um, I'm going to, like I said, I'm using um, the Lori Holt, um, some of the Calico Garden blocks to make pillows out of. So that b skeps going to be one. I'm going to be using, um, I'm going to be doing the Tomatoes block, um, the Garden Girl block, the fruit basket block and I have um, on my cutting table right now I've got the seedlings block and forgot what other block I have but they're all going to be either put to the smaller ones can be put together um, on pillows um, and then um, the larger ones, like the Garden Girl block, will probably be her own pillow. The Bee Skep will be its own pillow. Um, and I keep them, I keep my So Simple shapes and the instructions um, to cut in these um, sleeve protectors or uh, page protectors. And I just keep them in this basket and I grab them as I... Um, have time and I'll cut the fabric um, and then applique. It's super fun. I really love it um, and I can't wait to see how the pillows turn out. I have something special to put as a trim on the pillows um, that I'm going to share with you in a few minutes. All right. Um, I had a new start that's become a whip and it's called Though He Seemeth Sleeping. I showed you the chart in the last floss tube, um, Lucy Beam, um, per, it's a reproduction sampler by um, Rebecca Noland, and I love this. Um, and if you want to know um, more about it or see some finishes um, or some works in progress, I think. If I'm not mistaken, Cynthia, Stitching in the Light, and Barbara, the Raspberry Stitcher, I think they finished theirs, and um, from what I can tell on their Instagram, um, I saw Barbara's floss tube. Oh my goodness, this is an amazing sampler. I just love it. Um, she gives you like 80-something color choices to use. Um, if, you, if you want a sampler that um, I have not seen a designer give you that many choices of floss um, and you just um, write in I'll show you really quick I wrote in my my choices for the symbols 
based on her recommend recommendations. So this is the, um, I'm using a, um, a variety of flosses. Um, and these are the flosses that, that I'm using. I love the color palette. Um, that blue right there, I love. And I've got um, my floss bling. I've got um, a crown, a key, a heart, um, and this that I made. Um, I, I don't know if I've showed you this, but this is a sampler that I stitched last year. I probably have shown that to you. And I, these are really easy to make. Um, the company that I bought the kit from is no longer in business, but um, I did purchase extra um, so that I can make them as I, as I would like to um, make them. So I am keeping my floss and my magnifiers and my thread bed in this box that I um, made that I showed you in a couple floss tubes ago because this really just sits out all the time. Uh, and when I pick it up, I just want to be able to pick it up and stitch. So this is my stand. Um, I'm stitching this on 30 count honey glaze by Legacy Linens. And that is really all that I have started so far. <laughs> um, One Night with the King is my needle minder. I had that custom made for me by, I believe, Mad for Minders and on Etsy. Um, it is an awesome movie if you haven't seen that, One Night with the King. It's the story of Esther. Um, you know, they take the basic story from the Bible and make it into like a Hollywood movie, but it's it's really a good movie. Um, yeah, so that is 30 Count Honey Glaze by Legacy Linen. And let's see, my next whip is the Berry Bowl Sampler. I'm still, still working at that one. This is gonna be a while, but I am in the home stretch on the first half of it. Um, let me show you the chart. I'm sure you are familiar with it. Um, I am working on this right here. This is the last seg motif that I have on this side, and then I'll be moving to this side. Um, so in the chart, there's um, a little verbiage there. I won't be doing that. I'm going to take a segment from Jane Cowie's sampler by the Scarlet House. I'm going to put, I'm going to see what I can fit, you know, a few lines in it instead. Um, and I am using a variety of flosses. I've had to substitute some. Um, these are my floss choices for the Berry Bowl sampler. Um, and here's another, um, I didn't make this, but I took, I bought the charms and I put it together on that little pink floss ring. Um, yeah. So, this is a needle minder that I purchased on Etsy. I shared the maker with you on a previous floss tube. Uh, but I am just feverishly working on those berries, and then I've got the basket, and that's where I'll... I'm going to leave that blank for now until I finish and stitch it together, and then I will go ahead and stitch this once I have the two pieces um, connected together. So I just love this. 
it's fun, it's going to take me a while, and that's okay. Um, so that is my Berry Bowl Sampler. And I've got that in, um, I think this is called the Songbirds. I bought a uh, charm pack and then a little butterfly pull from Fat Quarter Shop. Um, they gave me a grab bag um, on Black Friday and I that was in the grab bag. Okay, let's see. The next whip is um, the Prim Stitch series. And I have that in my Prim Stitch bag that I made it especially for this uh, stitch because I knew it was going to be a while. I appliqued um, that on there from the Prim So Simple Shapes. Um, this is a little cross stitch uh, zipper pull that I made um, from one of Lori Holt's stitch, um, stitch cards uh, from the Dollhouse one, I believe. I think this is the Dollhouse. So um, let me show you. I am currently working on Welcoming and Cheerful. And this is number 9 of 12. I am way ahead of myself. I scheduled myself one block per month and I'm already on block 9. I started this in December. So I get, I was giving myself a year for this, but I think it's going to be a finish way before that. I'm using the um, Called For uh, Aura Floss, the Prim Aura Floss, and I have, um, okay, I have not yet started that block, but I got all the threads ready, but let me open this up so I can show you, I finished, um, I think a block and a half since I last was on. I'm sure you'll excuse the wrinkles, um, but that's where I am so far. So I've got four blocks to go. I love that little, um, garden girl with the sheep, the church. I, I love every, every one of these blocks. All right. So that is it for my whips. Yes, that is it for my whips. All right. So let, let me talk to you about, uh, I added a new segment last time on new skills that I'm developing. Um, and let me put my, ah, I think I lost my needle. Hold please. I'll have to find my needle later. I'm barefoot right now, so hopefully I don't step on it. <laughs> Oh my gosh, no, I didn't lose it. It actually popped off and it stayed on. <laughs> All right, yay. Okay. Now back to our regularly scheduled program. <laughs> um, so something that um, I'm trying to develop is how to make the back of my cross stitch look nice. There is a floss tube channel um, and video that I went to look at, and it's by Stitching by Sarah. She has a floss tube channel, and so um, I've been following her advice on this sampler. So the back of this doesn't look too bad. Um, so if you would like to 
check that out. Um, I highly recommend it. I don't remember what floss tube it is, but if you um, go to her channel and just scroll through, um, she has great videos. Um, all right, so before I get into my um, collection editions, I want to share with you something old and something helpful. Um, this right here is something my mom stitched. It's a bell pull from Colonial Williamsburg and it hangs in my entryway and she stitched this in 1987. And it's beautiful. I just love it. We used to travel from New Jersey, where I grew up, to Williamsburg um, for our vacations because my mom and dad enjoyed it so much. And we got a good bit of history there. And it was, it was great. Great memories. The back is this gorgeous muted fabric. I just love it. So I wanted to share that, it's my something old with you. And then my something helpful, um, I wanted to share with you, um, I don't know if you have ever thought about using paint cards to help you with your floss choices. Um, so, for instance, this is the classic and traditional um, paint collection. This was just a store-bought paint, I think, true value. But, so for instance, if you wanted to change your floss colors, um, this would be something you might like to follow. You know, for instance, this may be your color linen and then your floss threads or your color linen and your floss threads, um, and so on. This one right here, is it this collection? It may not be this collection. There was a like a nautical looking one. Um, but anyway, I thought this was a really great reference to have. Um, so I hope that's helpful to you. Here's the historic um, oh yeah, okay, this is the one I was talking about. This is the historic one. I was looking at this, this, um, grouping right here. So, this is very inspirational to me, and I think it will help me to have more confidence in putting different color combinations together, because you could tell like the brightness and the the hue of each color, the tone of each color. Because uh, that's what I seem to have trouble with when I'm choosing floss and that kind of thing. Um, Alright, so now let me get into my collection additions. Um, so I went ahead and downloaded Honey Bee Boulevard 2 from Stitching with the Housewives. And this is the honey cart with the hive in the wheelbarrow. I purchased, now this, this I wanted to have because I used to do farmer's markets with jam and um, bread. And so this just, this just puts it all together for me. Being a beekeeper, doing the farmer's markets. Um, and I bought this last year at Michael's for 4th of July. I believe I've shown this to you before, I'm not sure. Um, this is just a piece of styrofoam to make this front even, otherwise it would be lopsided. Um, I spray painted the whole thing gray. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this bottom portion so I'm gonna I'm gonna cut off the honey I'm not gonna say honey on this I'm going to probably just do that bottom half and put it on here 
Now, I did measure it out. Uh, I was going to put the honey on top, but I did measure it out, and I probably can get that bottom portion on here. And then I would just do a bow or something right here. Um, and these are magnets. And then I could um, embellish the top with like um, a honey dipper or something like that. So that's just my idea for that. Um, and also um, I downloaded... Oh no, I had to order this. Yeah, this is Let's Go Ride a Bike, 4th of July. This is um, the first one in the series, but you couldn't get it until just this month because it was a retreat piece. Um, oh yeah, I downloaded Pinker and Pum Pumpkin Quilting Mini Bee Sampler. Um, this is free on her blog. I'm going to show it really quick. It's just a sampler with a bee skep in it. Um, so go to her blog if you want to download that. Um, let's see. And then I got From the Heart Needle Art by Wendy, Lover of My Soul. I just love that. Uh, it says, Jesus, lover of my soul, let me to thy bosom fly while the gathering waters roll, while the tempest still is nigh. I love it. And then lastly, um, my friend Betty Heck, she has a Instagram and an Etsy store. Um, created to, the number two, created to create BH. She um, de-stashes some of her patterns, and she happened to be de-stashing part of her Hats exclusive um, Nicola Parkman's birthday box, the red box. So I grabbed this sampler from Betty. Um, Brigida Vezzoli 1871 and the reason why I wanted this one is because I have an Italian heritage and I also was born 100 years after she completed this sampler and Betty um, gave me uh, one skein of the silk um, called for silk so um, I ordered another skein so that I can finish the sampler and the count of fabric that I want. So I'm excited about that one. Um, today I was at Hobby Lobby and I picked up the six piece honey dippers. They were only 74 cents on clearance. They had a lot on clearance. They're starting to put their fall stuff out already. So I picked these up. Um, I also picked up this large pom-pom trim. I got this grayish blue, white, and I've got two spools of this um, like pale yellow. So when I put together my pillows, I can do this large pom-pom trim around the edge. Um, and then they also had a 99 cent sale on their Sewology threads and their Y, is it YYK or YKK zippers? Um, and I put them, I put the, flaw, the um, threads that I chose in this plastic box that I shown you previously, just so that I can show you um, in today's video, but they're going to be in a different, um, storage box when I'm through, but I thought those would be really great for finishing items like, um, pin drums, um, and doing app hand applique or machine applique. So those were really pretty. Um, I think that is it for my collection additions.
So um, I wanted to share with you what I'm listening to on Apple Books. Um, I'm still going through the Little House in the Prairie books. Um, when there's nothing on Floss Tube, um, I've been enjoying listening to that. Um, something else I've been enjoying watching are farmhouse home tours on YouTube. <laughs> They're so fun. You get so inspired. Um, especially the change of season, you know, and you want to redo your decorating and stuff like that. So that's been fun. I also have been listening on um, Apple Books to um, a book. I actually finished it. It's called Your First Orchid because my husband gave me an orchid for Mother's Day. Um, and I've been lis lis I listened to that to learn how to take care of that. Um, and then now I just want to give you a hobby farm update. Uh, I have a couple recipes, um, not not uh, very complicated recipes at all to share with you, but um, we've been making dehydrated tomatoes, Roma tomatoes, in um, extra virgin olive oil. We, since the new crop of tomatoes are coming up, um, I used up what we had frozen. I um, defrosted them, I put them in the dehydrator, and then I stacked them in a, a pint size mason jar um, and then covered them in olive oil. And we're gonna be using those in various dishes. Um, and we've been getting lots of eggs um, and the, the hens are just laying like crazy. <laughs> I think I'm pretty caught up on my creativity and learning how to um, incorporate eggs in different dishes. And two of my favorites lately are Huevos Ranchero um, Taco Pockets. Del Taco has these, um, if you haven't seen them yet, they're tortilla pockets. They look like um, a, a high pita, high narrow pita. Um, and so we've been making scrambled eggs with cilantro, salsa, um, uh, venison sausage um, that we have in our deep freezer. Um, and then the other um, kind of recipe I wanted to share with you is filled croissant French toast. <gasps> Talk about decadent. Um, you can fill it with whatever you want. Um, you just, you know, make a little slit in the in the croissant and stuff it with like um, mascarpone cheese, um, uh, something that is really creamy that you can get in there easily. Um, you can also put your favorite jam inside of it, fruit jam, and then you use it you know, you dip it in your egg mixture and then just roll it around in your pan and then top it with maple syrup. It's like dessert. Um, my mouth is watering like crazy right now. <laughs> so anyway, I hope you enjoyed um, this floss tube and I, I enjoyed um, doing it for you. And um, let's see, uh, I'm not sure when I'll be back on. Um, my mom is about to um, take a vacation, um, so maybe maybe later um, in the summer we'll be together. Um, but anyway, I am so glad um, that I have some new subscribers. Thank you so much um, for those of you who have been recommending our channel and um, all the sweet comments. Um, and if you watch and don't comment, I appreciate that too. Um, so ne till next time, I will see you then. Bye-bye.